You're listening to Insight from Capital Public Radio. I'm Beth Ruiak. Let's go from the music of the Roaring Twenties ahead to the fun, memorable tunes, dance tunes of the 70s. Was your stereo cranking out songs like Reeling in the Years and Ricky Don't Lose That Number? That's the music of Steely Dan, a band that Rolling Stone magazine called the perfect anti-heroes of the 70s. But the Steely Dan sound is hard to produce because they almost always use a horn section and female background vocals. However, we are so fortunate in Sacramento, the band Steely Dan has nailed it. The group has won a number of awards, including Sammy's, for its covers of Steely Dan songs. You can judge this for yourself. Steely Dan is playing at 7 o'clock at Harlow's this Saturday, February 9th. But a few of the guys are in our studio today. Hi, everyone. Hello. All right, so let's hear the individual voices. We have Sanford Rag, the lead singer. Hi, that, Sanford. That would be me. Okay, we got that voice. And then we have Dave Bueller, keyboardist. Good morning. Hi, Dave. And Kurt Shiflett. From guitar. Hello. From the guitar, from one of the guitars, because the band is 10 members, right? Correct. That's right. Mm -hmm. So am I right that 2013 is the 10th anniversary of Steel and Dan? Did you start in 2003? Yeah. I believe we did. Yes, yes it is. Yeah. Sounds about right. Yep. You're, you're looking I've, at each other like you didn't really We weren't realize. there at the time. We weren't right. uh, there in the original band, but I think the band's been going along for about that 10 years now. Yeah. And, and that's one of the questions, uh, moving the lead singers in and out and the incarnation of different artists, but keeping it all together. Has that been a challenge for the group? <laughs> yes, but we have we're in, we have a great lead, lead singer right now with Sanford, and uh, the vocals are sounding, the, I think, the best that they've ever sounded. People, yeah. When people come and go, and Sanford, you're the lead. In the past, there was a very popular lead singer who was a pastor. Is, is there um, ever talk of re-entry or combining f past voices? Well, I think... Um, we, it's hard enough if you imagine just in your regular business life to put 10 people together yeah. in a room at one time. Yeah. So we do generally keep what we sort of affectionately call the bullpen. <laughs> we try to have, you know, a couple people uh, in reserve and the lineup that you see at every concert won't be exactly the same. So how do you work with this sound? How do you do this? I already noted when I was introducing it about the horn section and the female voices What's the core work process to make this sound? Well, you know, it sort of begins with the rhythm section, and each of us have to learn our parts. And we, our, our goal in this band is really to try to reproduce the recordings as closely as we can. So, you know, we've studied these records. We've loved them and listened to them for many years, you know. So we've, I know when I joined the band, I sat down with every recording and basically transcribed all the parts, wrote out every piano solo or organ so solo note for note, and, mm -hmm. and learned that, you know. And so we did the same thing with the horn section. Charlie Langer, who's, who leads the horn section, um, basically transcribed all the horn parts, put that together. And then, you know, Kurt, of course, uh, plays a big role in as far as the, uh, the guitar goes and learning those solos and learning them note by note. Did you work it the same way, trying to yes. pick it apart? Yeah. Um, you know, as a kid, I grew up listening to this music, loved this music, tried to learn, you know, Larry Carlton's solos unsuccess unsuccessfully. Um, and, you know, when I was uh, had a chance to join this band, I thought, well, this is the perfect fit for me. Um, and so, I'd, you know, I've learned all the solos. Some of the solos I do, I improvise and do my own thing. But there's certain, you know, classic solos like the solo for Peg that Jay mm -hmm. Graydon did. You have to, you know, you got to play the solo for Peg. People want to hear that. And then, for example, at the end of the tune, I will, you know, improvise and do, do my own thing. Well, let's listen to a little of the music, and this is kind of fun because we had clips, but I told them, don't don't tell me what we're going to play, just just pop it on, and here we go. <laughs> All right. I like your pin shot. Perfect. I keep it with okay. your nice job. Okay, they're really smart. So you mentioned Peg, and they, they played Peg. That's, mm -hmm. that's our great team in there, Mark and Matt. <laughs> is that your vocal? That is not me. I didn't think so. No. Okay, no. so that was a little bit well, you'll earlier. Be able to, when your audience you, will be able to compare. When, when did you join the band? Uh, and I'm asking Sanford, by the way. A year and change ago. A year and a couple months. It's like August of 2011. 
Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you audition lead singers, Dave? Kurt? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we went through, I think, three before Sanford. It was tough. You know, uh, Michael Beeman was a great lead singer and yeah. big shoes to fill. Yeah. And uh, so we went through, I think, what, two or three other guys. And then Sanford stepped in. And every every gig, Sanford is improved. You know, and he's just nailing it now. So it's great. Have him. I have what might be either an obvious or really naive question, but what rules are there in performing published or copyrighted music, or what's the relationship in you being able to be this kind of a tribute band? Uh, that's interesting. I, I think the way it works is that the club plays pays a fee to ASCAP or BMI. It's just like a, a blanket fee on, on an annual basis, and that allows them to, to bring whatever uh, music they want to bring in. So do you have freedom to choose any Steely Dan song and perform it in any venue? Yeah, we do. Yeah, that's we what do. we do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, we don't sell any recordings or anything yeah. like that. That would be a whole different ballgame. Right. So. Yeah, yeah I and mean, even, if, even if you go to a club and there's a, and there's a DJ there that night playing radio hits, he's, he, the, the, the club is paying ASCAP to be able to do that. It's the same with us. And the band isn't involved at all in any of that. No, Thank the Lord. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I told you, as we were promoing that you would be here today, we heard from a couple fans. And mm-hmm. there's a, a freelance sports writer, James Rea, who's probably driving and listening to this right now. But I said, all right, James, what would your question be? So this is fun. He said, why is the song Asia so difficult to perform? Have you listened to that song, sir? <laughs> um, wow. Well, oh, I think wow. I think it's mainly <laughs> the big, the most difficult part of that song is for the drummer. The drummer's on the hot mm-hmm. seat, and that was Steve Gadd who you know performed that incredible drum solo. So the drummers are a little probably a little nervous before that one, and the harmony's very sophisticated. The chord progressions is difficult. Um, it's it's a it's a tough tune. Yeah, and, and Wayne Shorter played the sax solo on mm-hmm. that. So, you know, when you try to recreate something like that, it's uh, it's pretty amazing. So are there some you just stay away from, or does it depend on who's in that bullpen that Sanford talked about? The bullpen comes into it, but I think the band in general loves the music enough, and the more challenging the tune, the, the problem, we're more ready to get our hands on it and see what we can do you know like like they said the band's been around for 10 years we want to play the challenging material we want to play the hits for the fans but we want to play the challenging material that they don't think we're going to touch mm. you know give give them what they what they really came for you know so i'm ready to spin the dial i don't know if what we're going to hear fits what you just <laughs> described but let's hear another one by steel and dan And that's from one of your live shows, and that is Sanford. That is correct. Singing, which yeah. is awesome to hear, and it's so nice to hear it live. Are you excited to play Harlow's, a hometown oh, yeah. stage? Love, love playing Harlow's. Great sound system, good crowd. You know, it's that's our home court. Yeah, it's going to be our. I just counted them up. It's our eighth performance there in. Uh, is it really in the last two years or so? So it's. And if you haven't seen the band, it's actually a great place to get your first taste of it because the crowd there is amazing, and they get involved you know it's not a bunch of people just sort of sitting there with their arms crossed judging the band they they really get on their feet we have a great time it's it's a great place to see it yeah it's an intimate place where you can get up and move you can dance you can sit and and just mill around i think you get a real up close experience with a band mm-hmm. yes. and with this kind of music because it touches people so much they want that connection right. to it don't they mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, is there a song you're working on right now that you don't have mastered yet that you're waiting to roll out? Uh, no, because we, we, we need to rehearse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We have several in mind. We have several in mind. We, yeah. we have some ideas in mind. You have ideas. Yeah. Well, you probably have another 10 years ahead of you to, to flush yeah. out those well, ideas. That, that kind of goes into the complications we, you talked about, about the shifting lineups. 
And it's like perhaps there is a tune that we would all like to get going, but we look at our next two gigs and we say, well, we've got different lineups, so so we can't really do that yet. You know. I would love to do Night by Night. I've been. It's one of the tunes I've been wanting to do for quite a while, so maybe we'll get that one in. Well, go out on to Harlow's Saturday night, 7 o'clock, and that was Kurt Shiflett, and we have um, Dave Bueller and Sanford Rag with us from Steel and Dan, a Sacramento favorite. Thanks for stopping by and sharing your music. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having us. Come back again. Okay. Cheers. Love to. That's Insight for today. I'm Beth Ruyak. Our senior producer is Jen Picard. Our producer is James Morrison. Insight's executive producer is Joe Barr. And thank you for joining us.